Greetings everyone and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a famous multi-purpose stadium located off of Sugar Bowl Drive in the Central Business District of New Orleans, Louisiana. Recognized as home to the New Orleans Saints and surrounded by a number of local legends and ghost stories, are you prepared to explore the history and hauntings of Caesars Superdome? Historically, the Superdome was dreamt up by sports visionary David Dixon during his attempts to persuade the NFL to award New Orleans its own franchise. When, after several games hosted at Tulane Stadium during typical New Orleans summer storms, he was advised that they would never expand to New Orleans unless the city built a domed stadium. Dixon would go on to win the support of Louisiana Governor John McEthan in 1966 after touring the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, during which time McEthan was actually quoted as uttering, I want one of these, only bigger. And on November 8th of the same year, bonds were passed for the Superdome's construction. Just seven days after Commissioner Pete Rizal awarded New Orleans with the 25th professional franchise. Initially, the stadium was designed to be purposed as a multifunctional venue, accommodating football, baseball, and basketball events, with stands that literally moved in order to make way for various sports and purposes, and as a cherry featuring meeting rooms appropriate for all business needs. A number of minor setbacks would push the Superdome's build date out for a time. However, construction would finally start on August 11th of 1971 and would conclude in 1975. The same year, the New Orleans Saints would open the NFL season at the Superdome by losing to the Cincinnati Bengals with a final scoreboard of 21-0. When the devastation of Hurricane Katrina struck on August 29th of 2005, the Superdome was used as a last resort shelter for those unable to evacuate the city. And while the storm would rip a large section of its outer covering off, ultimately the dome would hold strong and would preserve countless lives. Following Katrina, the Superdome was closed until September 25th of 2006 for cleanup and restorations, and in 2008, it would welcome the addition of new windows that would allow for natural light to flood the building space. Later the same year, the roof was remodeled and modified to a whitish hue. Between 2009 and 2010, more than 400,000 square feet of aluminum siding was replaced in order to return the structure to its original appearance. And in 2011, naming rights to the stadium would be sold for the first time in history, after which it would be officially retitled as the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. In November of 2019, plans for the Superdome's most extensive renovations to date were launched. In a multi-million dollar effort aimed at seeing atriums in place of current ramps, alternating exits, field level end zone boxes, an improved kitchen and food service area, and upgraded concourses, and initial steps in these renovations were started in January of 2020. Most recently, in July of 2021, it was announced that naming rights to the prestigious stadium had once again been sold, this time to Caesars Entertainment, who would promptly rename the site as Caesars Superdome. Caesars Superdome remains open into the present, boasting a maximum seat capacity of 76,468 and, according to long-standing local legends, its fair share of hauntings. Chillingly, land the Superdome sits atop originally held the Girod Street Cemetery, which was established in 1822 and closed down through the 1940s, after which, in 1957, bodies were actually dug from the earth and reinterred elsewhere. Incidentally, from the Superdome's earliest days, those frequenting its bounds have reported encounters with a range of apparitions, in clothing spanning the ages, some of which that appear completely lifelike and that have even held full conversations conversations with unsuspecting living before vanishing through nearby walls or into thin air. When Hurricane Katrina struck, the Superdome would shelter more than 20,000 terrified human beings, during which time it would lose power, food stocks would rot, human waste would pile up, and tempers would flare. Through this period, six deaths occurred, four of natural causes, one of drug overdose, and one in an assumed suicide, in which a man jumped or fell from the structure's upper levels. 
Additionally, a number of bodies from those who died in the storm elsewhere were brought to the dome by family members who refused to leave their loved ones behind, and it's theorized this traumatic event left its own supernatural scars. To date, many have reported feeling sudden chills and inexplicable winds that sweep the Superdome spontaneously, often accompanied by the cries of a phantom crowd. Also reported across the premises are disembodied footsteps heard from empty spaces, instances of doors opening and closing on their own, of lights flickering without cause, tales of orbs and strange mists in photography, and the constant sense of never truly being alone. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Good night.